What's up guys, welcome back, Tony here. Today, a little something different. We're gonna do a little Q&A, a little interview with Jeremy Sires. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he has a YouTube channel. He's doing some really, really cool stuff over there. The only problem is, is he's in Jacksonville and I'm here in Louisville, so it's about a 12 hour drive. There's gotta be a, a better way than doing 12 hours. So uh, I got an idea, I got an idea, but Scotty. Scotty, energize. That, that did, didn't work. Hey, Scotty, give her all she's got, Scotty. Energize. That looks good. Microphone's good. The hell are you doing That's here? It's the only way to travel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot quicker than driving 12 hours. I'm trying to film a video here, well, man. Well, I got questions. We have questions, and I need I need some answers. I guess man, I got, you got 15 minutes. I guess, Damn. I guess I got a few minutes. I got a few minutes. You got questions. You're creeping up on 100,000. I am. I am, finally. It's taken a couple years now, but yeah, I'm finally creeping up on 100. It's been a busy week. Well, what's what's been going on? What's been going on with why it's been a busy week? Yeah, why has it been so busy? I don't know, man. I've just had a couple good videos lately, and um, the channel's just been growing really fast. I've averaged about, I think, about I'm close to a thousand a day for the last week or so. So, and that's the reason we're here. We have questions because we're struggling. We're not struggling. We're just we're smaller. We're smaller channels, and we're trying to get production value up. And you know, we're trying to figure out how to do it in an efficient way. And Brother. so we have questions. This is still a small channel. In the grand scheme of YouTube, 100,000 ain't shit. Uh, you're right, but <laughs> you know, with guys like Peter McKinnon and, and people like that that we all look up to, uh, 100,000 ain't much. But it's it's a start. It's, it's a start. It's a strong start. It, yeah, I'm looking plan. forward to the plaque. The plaque would be cool. I mean, it's it's kind of trivial, but it's just kind of a cool thing. It's like, okay, finally. I, you know. I, so where, where, where are you going to put it? I don't know. I might put it in here. I can't decide if I'm going to put it in here or if I'm going to put it in my other area that I shoot, which is my office, which is across the hallway over there. Which you guys are probably used to seeing if you watch his videos. Yeah, so if you guys don't know who this is, this is Jeremy Sires. He has a YouTube channel and he's really not a niche. He's kind of all over the place. He kind of bucked the system here because he doesn't do just one type of video. He does a lot of different kind of videos. It's true. So why don't you say something about your channel and well, why you do that? You know, I, it's one of those things that when I started doing YouTube, a lot of people said, do a niche. Niche channels get the best results. They grow faster. People like niche channels. They get more advertising dollars as far as they get more sponsors that reach out to them and stuff. But I just have bad ADD. Like, that's not my personality. So you get bored. I get bored really easy. And if I'm bored... I'm, I'm not going to, I know me from when I was in school, for instance, if I'm bored with something, I'm not going to kind of put everything into it. I'm going to dial it in and it's not going to be as good for it to be good. I've got to be interested in it. It's got to keep me inspired and my creative juices are flowing. And if I'm doing the same shit day in and day out, I get bored. So, so what, I just do a little bit of everything. So what's your favorite thing to do? I, I The way I started doing my channel was vlogs. That's the way I started back several years ago and I started it off just honestly as a way to record kind of things happening with my family so in the future we had a way to look back. It was a hobby. I had a full-time job. I was just doing this for shits and grins because I enjoyed cinematography, photography, stuff like that. Then it started getting a little bit of traction but it was growing really slow and I wanted to put a little more into it so I started doing tech reviews because I'm a big tech nerd. I love computers, I love Apple yes. stuff, I love all the tech. So I started doing tech stuff and when I started doing tech stuff it really started kind of going because then you've got searchable content. Vlogs, people don't really search for much, but Samsung 75 inch TV, people are searching for that. So then the channel really started growing. So I did a lot of tech stuff, but so I was kind of alternating tech stuff. I did some fitness stuff because I do, I'm big into working out. I owned a gym for a little while. And so I did some of that. And then recently, cigars is another one of my big hobbies. I decided to do a Man Shit Monday segment. The Man Shit Monday segment. Man Shit Monday, where that opens up a whole nother thing for me to do anything. So cigars, beard care, just anything that's on my mind, I just do a video on it. So one of the reasons I zapped over here to have some questions for this guy was his cinematic sequences are really good. And there's a group of us that we're all in a group chat and we're talking, we're trying to up our game and get our stuff a little bit better. 
but it's really hard. So I kind of wanted to get his take on how he puts these together. If there's a plan or if he, you just go out and shoot and stitch stuff together, or do you actually have a game plan of how it's going to go together while you do it? You know, it's, it's something we talked about before because he's my uncle, if you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so there you we're related. Go. Yes. Um, and uh, something we have talked about before, it, as far as like my sit down, talking head, tech reviews and stuff like that, which I usually have a cinematic sequence of some nature of the product in it, those are 100% planned out. I, I sit down, I write out how I want all the video to go, what I want to talk about. I film all the talking head portion and then I go back, listen to my talking head portion, edit it down to the precise video that I want. And once that's edited down, I use that. I highlight the areas that I want to overlay B-roll. And then I know what B-roll shots to get so I'm not shooting too, too much. Um, and as far as the cinematic stuff, that it, you can do a lot in post. But a lot of the transitions and stuff that are popular these days with the wipes and all this, if you don't do the right stuff in camera when you're filming it, you're screwed. You can't do it. So I'm, I'm saying a lot to say this. It's, it's a fine balance between planning out what you want to do so that you're not wasting a bunch of time shooting. But also, you've got to leave a little room for creativity. Sometimes when you're shooting, you think you're going to do this shot and then you get it and it looks like shit. So then you're like, well, that doesn't look good. So you got to play around a little bit till and you get the shot get you want. Work. So basically, you do have a plan when you go out there and shoot these things. Yes, the long, extensive Jeremy version of that answer there's, is there's a lot of planning. There's right. a lot of planning. <laughs> so one of the other things that we asked, because you know, he said this tech reviews. I don't know. I'll leave a card in the description and also at the end of the video to his channel in case you haven't seen it. But he does extensive tech reviews. So one of the questions we have is, do you need this expensive equipment? To be able to pull these videos off because i mean sitting here where we are now it looks like a, a movie set you can't see it because everything's off camera but there is a lot of equipment involved in doing this and you've done a few videos where you've just used your phone and i mean they look spectacular for coming off of a phone so people that are starting out do they need the big expensive equipment to get the good videos to get the good shots well Unfortunately, this is going to be another long answer. Well, you yeah. <laughs> know, because, well, and I hate to say it, but it isn't an easy answer. No. The short answer is no. It's, it, there's a famous saying that you've heard a lot of creators on YouTube say, it's, it's not the equipment you use, it's the person behind the equipment. Yeah. It's the creator, the person that's shooting it, that has the creative touch to it, the edit, you're adding your creative touch and edit that, that really makes a good video. You can have a guy that is a really good storyteller and a really good editor shoot something on a fucking potato and it look better than somebody that has no artistic vision whatsoever with a six thousand eight thousand dollar camera yeah that being said expensive camera gear does make your job easier you can definitely get awesome footage on iphones or samsung's or whatever you use for a phone these days because the cameras are so good and you got some of these lenses like sandmark or, or moment i just recently did a review on a sandmark anamorphic lens that looks just dope but you can definitely use that stuff and get great footage awesome but your low light's going to be a little limited because the sensors are small you're not going to be able to push it as far in color grading because it's not as much data in the image, so it's going to fall apart quicker in color grading. So, yes, you absolutely can on a budget make fantastic content these days. But if you have the money and you're into this kind of thing, investing in good equipment is definitely going to up your production value and make your job a lot easier. So, equipment it helps. Yes. It helps in the final product. Anybody who says equipment means nothing is full of shit full of shit full of shit and this aperture light for instance I, it's an expensive ass light it's an expensive man. ass light and you can dick around with these you know hundred dollar lights all day long and you're not going to get the same soft light you can get off an aperture light now can you set up 15 bounces and different reflectors and stuff and try to get something similar sure or you can just 
pop this light in here and get really awesome soft light. Yeah, so what you're saying is you can play around for an hour trying to duplicate this light right? to where if you have this light, you plug it in, you turn it on, and you're ready to shoot. Done, because you've got a freaking yeah. light source that's the size of, a, you know. Yeah, life life is easier. Yeah. So what is, let's go to cameras. What's your camera of choice and why? Well, I'm a Canon guy. So all you Sony guys out there, Sorry if you're smoking a shot. For, for, for all you Sony guys out there or uh, any other, I apologize, but I'm, I'm a Canon guy. Um, now, a lot of people say Canon, a lot of these Sonys and stuff. But you didn't start out with Canon, man. You you had GH5s. I had a GH5. Yeah, I had... did start out with Canon. I had a, my first camera was a 70D. My first more, yeah. you know, up, first DSLR. DSLR. Yeah. Um, and I tried some Panasonics and some other stuff and the autofocus just sucked. It was a good camera. I like the image it got, but I, being a solo person, I'm shooter, a editor. One man crew, I'm a yeah. one man crew. I have to rely on autofocus a lot, and the autofocus on that camera was garbage. When you get used to the dual pixel autofocus in a Canon, it's hard to get anything else. Sony's close. They're getting better. Sony but just doesn't have the screen, though, man. There's no flippy. There's screen. no flippy screen, and I, I know if you guys have watched YouTube, if you're into cinematography, you've heard people say this, and you're probably tired of hearing the shit. But the color science behind Canon is just second to none. It's it looks good. The skin tones look good. Things just Canon is. I just like Canon. I'm well, a Canon guy. I came down a couple years ago with a Sony A6400 when I first started on YouTube. And when I came back after that vacation, I immediately traded in for a Canon after watching him use his. And just the autofocus was just... And the Sony's good. I mean, it's a good autofocus. But it's it's to me, it's not as reliable as the Canon. I agree. So, I agree. I'm a Canon guy, man. I, and Canon definitely has some stuff they need to so do. So what would you recommend for a, an entry-level Canon camera for somebody that wants to... <sighs> Man, that's, get into a DSLR style camera, you know, where they can interchange lenses. I mean, I, is the ADD still a viable camera out there these I mean, days? The ADD is great. Uh, the problem I have is once you go full frame, it's hard to ever go back. In my and the, the, look, these are all my opinions, so I hope nobody yeah. goes well, crazy you kind in the of need comments. To explain because some people may not know the difference between a crop sensor and a full frame sensor. Well, uh, you just you have less just in the simplest form possible. You, it crops your image in. So when you get like a micro four thirds on a Panasonic or a, a crop sensor on a Canon ADD or something like that, a 50 millimeter lens isn't really 50 millimeters. You're getting cropped in, so you're getting a smaller image. You're not getting as much in the frame. So if you want a true 50 on a, co a crop sensor, you've got to get something way smaller. Like a, I think, I don't know the math off the top of my head. What is like a 30 something's about a 50 cropped? Isn't that about the math? It's a 1.6. It's a 1.6 crop. 1 so, so whatever you're filming with a 50, you times it by 1.6 and that's going to give you your focal range instead of a true 50 millimeter right. on a full frame. And there's some other stuff that comes along with that. With full frame cameras, you get a little better depth of field and stuff. Full frame cameras have a different look to them than a crop sensor camera. So like right now, I think to get into a full frame Canon, what is the 6D Mark II? Or is that, is the, is the what's the one? A lot of people don't like the it. The EOS RP. Is that a full frame? It's a full frame. And is that cheaper than a? It's cheaper. I think it's about a twelve hundred dollar body, but it doesn't shoot twenty four frames a second. Which, which is, is that? See, Canon, doesn't make any see, sense. That's the kind of shit that Canon does. They do that it's, infuriates people, and I totally understand it because that is dumb. Why you would do that? I have no idea. Yeah, that doesn't no. make any sense. But yeah, I mean, look, if you're just looking to get into entry level, you can pick up a seventy D. It has dual pixel autofocus. It's and, ready to go. And that's an older camera. You can pick one of those up for on the cheap. So if you're just looking to get in budget, something that you can start getting some interchangeable lenses, get the dual pixel autofocus, get the color, the Canon color science, 70D. I mean, you could pick one of those up for probably like four or $500 these days. Yeah, and then you can invest in some good glass and it'll interchange. A lot of people will say glass yeah. is more important than the body. Well, so, you have a lot of glass. I, I'm a big fan of... He's I'm a big, big fan. He's a I'm, fan. I'm a big fan of Canon L-series lenses. I think they're they're really... They're definitely some of the most expensive ones out there, but in my opinion, they're worth it. Well, I, we got off on a fucking tangent on yeah, this did. one. We did. We, we, we lost focus. This is... All so, yes. Complete. So, <laughs> so, to circle back, if you're, you asked, the question was, budget camera would be 70D. 
That being said, if you have the money right now, the camera we're shooting on, I think is probably dollar for dollar, one of the best cameras you can get. Now, a lot of people talk shit about this camera when it yeah. came out. And I'm not going to go into all the reasons why I love it because this will end up being a 35 yeah, minute no, video. Yeah, no, man, yeah, we'll need a soothing ointment after that. But, but the EOS R for under two, under $2,000 for the body, yeah. I mean, I have a 5D Mark, or, uh, no, what am I saying? A 1DX Mark II. I, I traded this in for a 5D Mark IV for this camera. I have a 1DX Mark II, which is like a $5,000 camera that I basically only use now for when I'm shooting 120 frames a second. So I, everything else you shoot on Everything it. else I shoot on this because I, I just love the camera. It's smaller, it's easier to take around, and it's the I, we won't get into the specifics, no, but it's, man, that, it's great. 1DX Mark II is a monster. I it's mean, a you, great camera. You I, strap that 7200 you have on there. I mean, you need a crane to pack that damn thing around. you, you got to go to the gym and do some curls just to get ready. If you put that thing, you put the 1DX on a, say, like a Ronin S gimbal with an L lens, and you better have done some working out. You better. Because okay, it so burns. Ted, we're, man, we are running, 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 running. <laughs> See, so, this is why my videos yeah, are 15 Yeah, no shit, five. man. Mine are like five. <laughs> so... If we say, okay, that's for the budget DSR. Say a guy wants to start doing this and all he has is his phone. What do you recommend? Because I've, you've done numerous gimbal uh -huh. videos and numerous you know, lens videos for right. these, these phones. What would you need to really step your production up and use your phone and make it a viable camera for YouTube? I tell you right now, and we talked about this the other day too, right now I have <clears throat> uh, just got sent a company Movi, which if you guys are into this kind of stuff, you might've heard of Movi. They're pretty big into cinema gimbals. They do like $10,000 gimbals for big red cameras and stuff. Excellent company. They make a smartphone gimbal called the Movi Freefly. And I've used the, the uh, Zions, I've used several other brands, and I liked them all, they were all good. Uh, don't get me wrong, I did reviews on them and they're great, but since I've had this Movi, in my opinion, as far as cell phone gimbals go, bar none the best one I've used. It's just, I mean, you used it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, it's it's very easy to use. It's too. easy to use, it's buttery smooth, it's got a totally different configuration than most gimbals, which are like a kind of staff kind of stick. This one's got a handle on the side, you can, so you can two-hand it really easily. It's a great, great gimbal. It's a little more expensive. It's, it's a little more, but it's well worth the price. Movi knows their shit. So the Movi gimbal, and then either, I've done a lot of reviews on Sandmark because they've sent me some stuff and I think it's really high quality stuff, all metal uh, and glass lenses for your iPhone or your smartphones. But problem with Sandmark is if you're not an iPhone user, they only make stuff for iPhone. So you're hosed. So you're hosed. If you're not an iPhone user, Moment is another fantastic and they do the anamorphic they do the anamorphic the zoom the fish eye the wide angle and then with the the thing i like about the movie is it has a counterweight system a lot of those gimbals when you put the lenses on it won't balance right because the lenses add so much weight to your phone the movie you can buy a counterweight system so that everything lines up so i mean i showed so you them. don't get the micro jitters or you anything don't get the like micro jitters that. or any that weird shit or just have balance issues but and the great thing and i showed him the other day is a camera bag this big Small little yeah, camera. Yeah, no, bag. you're in a it was tiny. small rig. You can throw that gimbal, three or four of those different Sandmark or Moment lenses, and some ND filters and all that stuff because that's a big part of getting footage to look good on smartphones is using ND filters so you can keep up that 180 degree shutter rule thing. Um, but you can put all that in a small bag. And then you could throw that if for you guys that watch yeah, this channel. Yeah, especially for us that are on motorcycles doing it. I don't know about... I can speak for myself, man, when you go out and you're taking all your gear with you, I mean, it is a lot of stuff to pack around in a mm -hmm. backpack it, and it's heavy. It's not light stuff. So be able to take your phone and just a little pack with a gimbal and throw it some, in your, some lenses would be, yeah. Throw it in your bag and your side bag, your sidearm bag, what the hell they call those? Things? Swing arm bags. Swing arm bags. I used to have a motorcycle. Well, yeah, I was going to say, man. You, I did. You, you had a Harley there for a while. I sold it. But, yeah, I did have a Harley, Harley for quite a while. I did enjoy riding it. but So, you say a Moby gimbal and a couple lenses, and that would be a viable option to get some really good footage. Man, I've had a, I've had a couple videos that I did on these Sandmark lenses. I did one a while back on their wide angle. I'll leave a card. He's got one getting ready to pop. Yeah, and I'll I've got it. They're anamorphic. And all those shots on those videos were shot 
with an iPhone and those lenses. So yes, if you're needing to do run and gun and you don't want to drop a whole bunch of cheese on expensive stuff and you want to keep your gear small anyway, I mean, you can get a lot done with those cameras. You can get a lot done. You can get a lot done. So we've covered a lot of camera shit here. Yeah, we I have. mean, and we probably got off on tangents. It's probably, you probably, yeah, it's... I talk a lot. Yeah, it's out there. You but, can't ask me a question and ask me to say something short. But one of the questions that Joe, the great egret, wanted me to ask, and I guess it's on a lot of YouTubers' <laughs> minds, is I mean, at what point did you say, I'm, I'm all in, I'm doing this full time? Well... Because that's a big, that's a big commitment, man. To, it is. To say, you know what, I'm going to do YouTube full time. For me, it was a little bit more of a unique situation than most. And here goes long-winded shit. So here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, so guys. Go I, get something to drink. Go get something to drink. Go to the bathroom. Hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll take a pot. Go take a piss if you yeah, need to. Yeah, go take a piss. It's kind of like when you go to a Dave Matthews concert <laughs> and he plays C Cup and it lasts like 38 minutes. <laughs> we'll wait. Go ahead. Go pee. <laughs> no. Um, it, it's kind of a long story. It was something, like I told you, I started out as it was a hobby. I enjoyed doing it. I wanted to make it full time, but I also worked a full time job, which made it impossible for me to put the amount of time into it that I needed in order to make it a full time job. So I was kind of in limbo for a little while. And then. The, Where were you in subs, roughly? I was. When I went full time, I think I was around maybe under. I was under 10. Yeah, you, it was early. It was, it was early. It was under 10. But for most people, that, and that's why I said my situation was a little unique, for most people that would not be a viable way to cut into yeah. full time because at 10,000 10, subs, you're not making enough money. No. I had the fortunate situation where the company I worked at, I had worked at it for 15 years, I had been wanting to leave for years. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to pursue more creative things. And they were doing layoffs. Yeah. So I had, they were offering buyouts. So I had the opportunity for them they offered me a one-year salary. They were going to pay me for a year if I took the buyout and just let them lay me off, so to speak. So I left with a year salary knowing I don't have to worry about my income from YouTube for 12 months. I can throw everything into this that I you can dive, I can in, head dive in head first and just push, 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 push. I've got a year to make this shit happen and not have to worry about an income because I had an income coming in. Yeah. And my wife, I'm fortunate that she has a decent living, so it wasn't going to bankrupt us if yeah. shit took longer than I thought. Um, but yeah, so I was fortunate in that situation. Most people, income-wise, you're going to... I think recently there's a, a guy that I did a collaboration with, uh, Gameski. He does a lot of mostly... He does a lot of headphone reviews, strangely enough. Um, not that headphone reviews are strange, but... Can, Pairing that we're talking yeah. to Moto guys mostly, probably. Yeah. Um, I think he just did a video where I think he went full time. Yeah. And I want to say he's around 35K. So, I think. still, that's not a lot, man. There's not a, you know. If you diversify your channel and you're not relying on only the YouTube ad, so revenue, if you get into the Amazon and you get into your Amazon affiliates, maybe you get with some other brands and get in their affiliate programs. Most YouTubers make more of their income on other stuff than they do on actual ad revenue. So through the Amazon affiliate links and different affiliates and brands. So you need to diversify. You just can't rely on YouTube. You got to diversify that portfolio. You got got to get money coming in from all angles. <laughs> well, and with the sketchy shit YouTube's doing right now, they keep getting more and more restrictive on what they allow for monetization. So they used to allow. Like for instance, all my cigar related stuff just recently got demonetized because they decided that they weren't gonna allow monetization on tobacco, alcohol, and I heard, if I'm correct, I don't wanna say this for sure, but I'm pretty sure firearm stuff, any firearm channels are on, on yeah, the- Yeah, firearms under. is weird. You guys, you know, we're on the moto side, we all know who Blockhead is, and he started a separate channel uh -huh. because he's a firearms instructor, right. safety instructor, and he started a completely separate channel for that because he didn't want it to cross over yeah. into his, his main channel. And I don't know. I have not heard verification that that was what was happening, but some of the stuff that I've heard people talk about on YouTube is those are the ones that are under the gun right now. I can verify for sure any guys who have cigar channels or tobacco-related channels, 
demonetized. Every cigar, I don't have that many. It's only part of what I do. Yeah. But all those cigar videos got demonetized. It, yeah. So you don't want to be in a situation where you're solely relying on YouTube and then they demonetize your particular subject because they decide that it's not advertiser friendly and then all of a sudden your income's gone. Yeah, then you're... You're changing. You're, you're you're hosed up. You're 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 scrambling. You're hurt. You're you're hurt. So well, so all right. So there it is. That's when he went full time. So I know that you watch YouTube. It's almost exclusive. You I watch a ton. Watch it. Who do you watch? What's what's well, what's cool out there? Peter McKinnon, obviously. Well, we everybody watch knows Peter. about Come Peter. Come on, man. I mean, that dude is. He's just a talented dude. He's very charismatic, and he deserves every sub that he's gotten. He's he's really great. Um, his whole crew, I find, I know it's ridiculous. Yeah, his whole crew, I found all those guys. If you're into cinematography or it's that kind of stuff, him, Matty Hapoya, um, what's the other guy with the long hair? I feel bad that I'm not thinking of his name right now. He's one of that crew. I don't know, but there's four or five of them. There's man. four or five of them. They're they all, all do spectacular super stuff. Super. When it comes to cinematography type stuff, that is definitely. Who is my, that guy you showed me the other day? With, he doesn't have a lot of videos. Oh, Josh Yo Yo. Um, jo no, the other Josh Yo Yo is good too. Yeah, Make Art Now is his channel. Um, another really talented guy. He always his name's Josh Yo. I think he always starts. He's a video. Sony shooter. He's a Sony He's shooter. A Sony he is, shooter. but he also has like one DX. Yeah, oh. he, he has a Canon one DX. Um, he goes both ways. He goes both ways. <laughs> Demonetize. See, that's Demonetize. it. You're done. <laughs> Um, it is. But uh, he's he's another really good one. So Make Art Now, if you're into cinematography, uh, who's the other guy? What? Are you his brother passed away. Oh, I mean, yeah, everybody knows him. Sam Colder. Man. Yeah. I mean, phenomenal he, yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, he is top level cinematography editing type stuff. He doesn't do any tutorial type things, really, or many of them. He doesn't do a no, lot of No, they all look like little films. Yeah, and there's all, not a lot of them either. No, and he doesn't post very often because I guarantee you, uh, from being a guy who does a lot of editing, I guarantee you those edits that he does take months. I mean, so start to finish on one of your videos. What are you talking about? A week? It depends. I, I'm trying to get to where I'm. I'm, I'm trying to get two out a week um, by batch recording, and that's another kind of tip that a lot of people use to get out multiple videos. Is they batch record. They'll record three or four videos at a time and edit them all at once, so they can plan out their whole month. But anyway, normally I would say I've gotten it down to three, four days. Usually, I don't know, man. I saw your timeline in Premiere, and I had to go take a Tylenol. <laughs> There's a lot of going I mean, on. It was There's ridiculous. A lot. And I am a Premiere Pro user. Uh, for anybody that wonders that, a lot of people I get that question a lot. Rather, I do Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. Well, you saw, you had me switch. I used Final Cut for ever since I started YouTube, and here in the last month, I switched over to Premiere. Yeah, Final Cut's great, but I just think Premiere with all the other tools. It's, I find it's, it easier. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I find it a little more intuitive than Final Cut. I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's good. But trying to think of any other YouTubers. Non-cinematic stuff, the guys that I showed you the other day, I have been binging their channel. Uh, the Hodge Twins. Hilarious. They're very conservative. They're, <laughs> they're conservative. <laughs> it's definitely not kid-friendly content. No, it's not kid-friendly. Uh, it, but they have like three or four channels. They do like a uh, workout channel, but, and they do a, a, a Ask Hodge Twins where they just read emails. It's just funny stuff. It's, no, it, it is funny. It's, it's not related to anything we're talking about. They're just funny guys. Casey Neistat. You know, yeah, he, Casey he was, Neistat. He was one of the guys that got me into vlogging. In the so he was with. one of your He was one of my the originals. Influence. Right. He was the original guy that got me. I'm like, man, that is cool that he's recording his life, basically. I'm like, that's what got me into doing vlogs and stuff like that. And it seems like, you know, we, we talk, talked about it a little bit. It seems like the, vol the vlogging has, is evolving Yes. It's not just, I think when Peter McKinnon came into the picture and people could saw this cinematography and the cinematic sequences, mm -hmm. everything is kind of, kind of changed. It makes it just way more enjoyable to watch. Yeah. I mean, it, th there's nothing wrong with the old school vlogs. Some of those are still really good. And if you've got a very charismatic, entertaining person, they can be good. But man, it's just cool watching a good cinematic sequence. Yeah, there's something about it. You're like, man, that's just awesome. That looks good. That just looks, looks good. good. It just looks good. And you'll, you'll play it back. And you'll play it. I want to see that again. But you know, it was like you were talking the other day about how you and some of your, your guys on here were talking, you know, is mode of vlogging evolving? You know, going, it has to. going from the traditional slap a GoPro on your head or these days the Osmo uh, The Osmo action, action. Dope new little camera yeah. that just came out. But... It went from you know just strapping that on, having a good mic, and riding your motorcycle around and talking 
to now a lot of guys are incorporating cinematic sequences or they're not even really doing a lot of the GoPro stuff. They're doing more vlog style with a normal camera with just the focus being motorcycle ride. Yeah, like the Adam Sandoval. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his... I actually, me personally, not being in the moto vlogging category, yeah. I like that style of stuff. Because you can, I think you can tell more of a story and make it more of an interesting. You can tell more of a story, and you're not. You you can ha, you, you're more creative with it. Right. I think. You know, when I first started, I, it was a GoPro, man. I, I was down, and I said, "I'm going to get a GoPro. That's all I need." Yeah. That's it. I'm going to do everything and on a GoPro. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, I, st I think there's probably still a place for that. I but. think there is too, but it it does evolve. For you, a lot of you guys know it. It snowballs. For me personally, a lot of video making is is not just making money and and you know doing stuff on tech or whatever it's a creative process for me i enjoy the creative process behind it coming up with really cool shots that look good and and trying to be as cinematic and creative with it as i can so that kind of keeps my juices flowing so cinematic let's let's talk about one cinematic is such an overused this, term by the way i know it's very overused <laughs> this is probably going to piss a lot of people off you think the 120 is overused I overuse it. I know. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's yes. 120 is probably overused because you can take anything, film it in 120, and there's just something about it. You can be filming the most boring a cow taking a dump in a field in 120. In 120, sure. and it looks way cooler than yeah. you know. So yes, it does tend to get overused, but. It just looks so damn good. It does look good. It's just so buttery. And smooth. if your shot isn't worth a shit, you go, I'll just slow it down. I'll just slow it down. Great. That shit looks awesome. It'll look awesome. <laughs> but it probably is overused. It's a crutch for me a lot of times. I use it. I've heard Peter in his videos mention that it is a crutch for him. It's it is, and it's probably overused, but it just looks good. It but does. it it is a good creative challenge to yourself to try to sometimes make a sequence without using any 120. Any 120. The last sequence I did for the Sandmark lens, I didn't shoot any slow motion. I shot all at normal 24 frames a second. And um, I'm gonna say there was a few that when I got back editing, I'm like, that looks good, but. It, it would've looked a lot better. It would've, looked, it would've looked cooler in 120. <laughs> well, I don't know, I saw the sequence. Your videos would be out tomorrow on that. Yeah, I think, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, it should be out I saw the sequence. It, it, pretty damn good to it, me. it looked good I mean it turned out well it turned but out real good there was definitely a few sequences though that I was like man if I had 120 I could have speed ramped that into slow motion and that would have just looked clean it would have looked We're just buttery buttery but it's good not to go crazy it's good not to go crazy with the transitions too too some people get too slap happy I make sure in every sequence I have a couple just straight cuts every single transition doesn't need to be something it fancy. doesn't need to be something fancy right. some whips and tracks right and that gets overused and blown out too. So you know everything in moderation, including moderation. I know, but when you when you finally figure something out and you get it working and you yeah. know, you're editing, you're, you're like, like, damn, that's going in everything that like, I'm that doing. That shit is awesome. I'm it's doing all, that. Ever. <laughs> that's all I'm doing from now on out. That, that's what that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's good. So all right, we're gonna wrap this up because he's gonna feed me before I leave. So yeah, he, he's a hungry bitch. I, that, you know, that, <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Came down here to Florida. Came down here to Florida. I'm hungry. I worked up an appetite all that transport. I did. I did. <laughs> Setting up all this camera stuff in the right position wore me out. It, it, there is a lot of shit. Well, we had to because if we used another lens, our balls were showing. Yeah, it was tough. We were going <laughs> wide angle and you could see up my pants and then it would have definitely been demonetized. Yeah, so you can't. It, so... It's, and then we felt uncomfortable being so close. It's like yeah, because you're I, talking, you don't yeah, want to stare into another man's tight. eyes. Yeah, but then we weird. pulled out. Then there was there was the moose knuckle, and yeah. we couldn't <laughs> yeah. we couldn't go that way. It, that YouTube life. People don't understand. Actually, the guys watching this might get it, but most people don't understand that YouTube struggle. No, it's a struggle. It's the a struggle, struggle is real. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. So we're gonna go eat. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me waste your time as always. If you like the video, please give us that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button somewhere over here. And like always, guys, ride safe and be careful out there. And all Jeremy's channel will be linked down below. Check it out. You'll be able to check it out if you haven't seen it. Later.